YouTube. Hi, everybody in the sanctuary. Y'all look good tonight. Mary and Bethany, thank you for everything you do up there. Amen. Amen. All right. Announcements. What we got going on? Oh, man, that. Yes, that. Next That's week. next weekend. Because, um, you know, we just like to fill our weekends up as much as we possibly can. Because that's who we are. Anyways, uh, next Saturday and Sunday, the swap meet. Do not go to Palmer Park and Academy. Make sure that you go to the Norris Penrose Center down, um, down on the southwest side of town. So that event is from 9 to 6 on Saturday and from 10 to 5 on Sunday. And Biker Church will have a booth. So if you would like to come hang out with us, I've had several people ask me if we have a sign-up. We don't have a sign-up. Just come hang out with us. Um, when somebody comes in, somebody else can go out and go shopping and visit. And when somebody else comes in, somebody else can go out and go shopping and visit. Um, we never have a shortage of people. So um, similar to today in the basement, we never have a shortage of people. We always have the exact right number. Um, so that's next weekend. And then the Baca event is Saturday, April 16th. It still blows my mind that we're talking about April events because next we'll be talking about June events. Okay. Anyway, yep. uh, what's next? Oh yeah, we're having a yard sale. You know, I, I don't forget about this, <laughs> but it definitely is not as right here as it needs to be. So, um, can we get hard copies of that, Miss Mama Beth? Sure. Yeah? If we could get hard copies of that, that would be good. If we could have hard copies of that, maybe um, at the booth next weekend, we could tell people we're having the art sale. Okay. Yeah. Going to FedEx. Awesome. <laughs> um, so anyway, we are having the art sale, and that is the 22nd and 23rd of April. And that is to raise money for our outside project that we're going to take on um, this summer, working on making the Circle Drive side of the church more beautiful. So all the money raised at that event will go to that. So if you've got something that you want to donate to that, let us know. And if you want to come and hang out with us that day, let us know. Yeah? We'll be here. We'll be here. Clothes, gadgets, boots. What were the words on that? Go back. I know, I keep making you go back. Sorry. It's all right. Um, it says clothes, gadgets, books, furniture, dishes, etc. All right. <laughs> I was trying to be all encompassing. Yes. Yeah, that's very all inclusive. Okay. All right. Car and bike show April 23rd down at Murray Street Darts. Definitely do that if you've got time, but we'll be having a dart sale. We can take turns like we do at the booth. Mm. International Female Right Day, May 7th. I don't know enough about that yet, but I'm sure by April I will. The Vets for Vets Spring Party. I do have tickets um, for the meat raffle. So that's a seven cubic foot freezer full of 132 pounds of meat. $10 tickets. Pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal with the price it's of pretty meat. Pretty good deal yeah, with the price of meat. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Um, next, blessing of the bikes. So we um, <clears throat> already have flyers for that, already have um, postcards for that. We'll hand out a bunch of those next week. Um, talk to a bunch of people with the swap me about that. We will have paper uh, registration forms at the booth next weekend so that if people want to register there, they can. Um, if you want to register here on paper, you can. There's papers out in the foyer. Um, you can always run a card for your registration. And if you need to budget, you know, the cool thing about this is that you could um, register now and you could pay for your registration and then your t-shirt later or something like that. There is a button on the website and if you scan the QR code on the flyer, you'll go to the website where you can register and pay. Um, through email and through the online donate button. So lots of different ways to take care of that. Um, Bikers United for America Spring Run is the day after the Blessing of the Bikes, and they will be raffling off that uh, eagle. That was Jim Ware's. It was in a couple different bike stores, and chance drawing tickets for that are $10 each, or seven for 50, and I have those tickets as well. 
that Eagle stands about this tall. Um, and there is also a soldier's cross that stands about that tall. You guys know what a soldier's cross is? The boots, the gun, the hat? Um, that was donated to Vets for Vets, and that's going to be raffled off in the fall, and tickets for that are $10 each as well. Vets for Vets stuff, that money always goes to helping homeless vets. So if that's something that's on your heart, those are good causes um, for that. And you can give in person, you can give on PayPal, you can give through the website, all kinds of different ways to turn a little bit of money back into the kingdom. There's lots of swag on the table back there. We are taking um, some swag to the indoor swap meet as well, but there are shirts and hats and neck gaiters and other such items, hoodies back there. There are only four of the dark gray long sleeve shirts left. So if you don't, if you don't have one of those or you want one of those, there's only four left. They're all four out there. I don't know what sizes they are. So if you are interested in one of those, you might want to get your hot little hands on it. Because last time that I tried to replenish those, that color of gray was no longer available. So the odds of us getting those again anytime soon doesn't really exist. Ta-da! Ta-da! I did, did it. You, did you ask Fred? If you no, I did not ask Fred. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, really? Do you really? Yes, I do. What do you have? What? The International Serenity Run. Oh, the International the Serenity Run. Run called Stroker with Your Poker. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that from up here. That's why I'm saying it for you. <laughs> I don't even know if Beth can put that flyer up. <laughs> that will... Giggles is having a great time right now. <laughs> Am I red? Like your shirt? Anyway, that's Sunday, May 22nd. Uh, registration at 10 a.m. First flight out at 10.30. Last flight out at 11. It starts at the uh, Conoco Station in Sedalia. And it finishes at Matney Park in Castle Rock. Uh, Amen. <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought brass balls was bad. <laughs> Jamie, what was you the name of that again? What? What was the name of that again? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? No. Nope. Moving on. You know what I will say from the pulpit is the RSR, International Serenity Run, is having a ride on this day. <laughs>
download or if you have a Bible app that switches around in different versions. Um, man, I just really, really am drawn to the Amplified for this series. So, we are in the book of John, Matthew, Mark, John in the New Testament, um, in chapter 2, starting at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana, Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, what is that to you and to me? My time to act and to be revealed has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, ceremonial washing, containing 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to the servants, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. Then he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter of the banquet. So they took it to him. And when the head waiter tasted the water which had turned into wine, not knowing where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom, and he said to him, everyone else serves his best wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then he serves that which is not so good. But you have kept back the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, attesting miracles, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, displaying his deity and his great power openly, and his disciples believed confidently in him as the Messiah they adhered to, trusted in, and relied on him. This is God's word. Father God, I thank you now for the opportunity to address your people, and Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the building, but I thank you for the people in the building, the church. Father, as we explore your miracles, I pray that we would get great insight and that we would see how each one of them truly and deeply is us, affects us, can affect us. And I pray that we would see Jesus into your eyes, that we would see into your heart for us as your people, and that we would see into your heart for people that are not yet yours. Father, I pray that minds would be open and spirits would be willing to receive your truth, your hope, your promise, your salvation. And I pray that you would increase as I decrease before you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> on the third day, there was a wedding. This event takes place on the third day third day of what? The third day after Jesus had called the last of his 12 disciples. So let's take a look at that event first. So we're going to flip the page back. I'm going to flip the page back. You might not have to. To John chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 43 to 47. The next day, Jesus decided to go into Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. As my disciple, accepting me as your master and teacher and walking the same path of life that I walk. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus from Nazareth, the son of Joseph, according to public record. Nathanael answered him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip replied, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob, in whom there is no guile, no deceit, nor duplicity. Okay. you got to love this whole story. I, I love this whole story, right? Because Nathanael says to Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
in response to, I, we have found the shepherd, we have found the Messiah, we have found the one, we have found that. Well, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Wow, Nathaniel. Wow. But more than that, I love Jesus' response. Here is an Israelite indeed, in, one, in whom there is no guile, no deceit, no duplicity, no double talk. Nathaniel just says what he's thinking. He just lays it right out there like, okay, Nathaniel, say it like it is. <laughs> you might have to admit your error later, Nate. <laughs> but, you know, for right now, just say what you're thinking. And Jesus likes that. Right? He didn't say, really, dude? He said, well, here he is. This one's probably just going to shoot from the hip. <laughs> Nothing wrong with shooting from the hip, is there? Yep. You know, say it, say it like it is. But what I really, really enjoyed was the rest of this, 48 to 51. So Jesus says, there's no guile, no deceit, no duplicity in this guy. Nathaniel said to Jesus, how do you know these things about me? And Jesus says, before Philip called you, when you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus replied, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe in me? You will see greater things than this. Then he said to him, I assure you, and most solemnly I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, the bridge between heaven and earth. Wow. Now, that's a conversation that was pretty intense, right? Jesus is like, say it like it is, Nathaniel. Say it like it is. But you are going to see greater things than that. Do you believe me because I said something to you? Wait till you see what happens next. Does God ever say that to you? Oh, yes. You know? It's like, it, it's like okay, all right, here it comes. I know you believe in me. I'm, I'm so excited that you accepted me as your Lord and Savior. That's amazing, and I love you, and that's fantastic. Wait till you see what happens next. Wait till you see what I do with your life. And we are, need to be Nathaniel, right? Say what we're thinking, shoot from the hip, but then wait till we see what happens in our lives next. Because our God is a water walker, miracle worker. Amen? Amen. You are about to see big things, so brace yourself. So now he's got his 12 disciples, and off to a wedding they go. Why does Mary need for Jesus to do something here, right? His mother comes to him, and she's like, I don't have any wine. What's that all about, right? Some people think that she was the host. Um, a lot of theory on this is that she was at least somehow related to the wedding party. Um, was she embarrassed that they ran out of wine? Did she want him to save their reputation? Make it all better? Was she just a little codependent? You know? Smooth it over? We gotta have wine. Right? She knew that God had ordained Jesus at his baptism. So did she think that it was time for him to reveal himself because that event had happened and, and it was time for him to go public? It really doesn't matter exactly what the reasons were, right? The truth is she knew that he could do something about this. She knew that he was capable of handling this situation. Do we have that same trust in our Jesus? 
Do we believe that in our moments of need that he can do something? Yes. Do we, do we think that in our moments of embarrassment that he's not embarrassed or worried about it? God's got a plan. Do we have expectations of him and want slash need him to do something on our time? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, let's just all be human for a minute, yeah. right? And let's not forget that his mother was insanely human, right? But Jesus said to Mary, my time has not yet come. And that is Jesus' way of telling his mother that, um, and all of humankind for the rest of time in this scripture, you don't write in my daytimer. <laughs> Some people may not know right? what it is. <laughs> we don't determine when Jesus does things. We don't tell him when his hour has come. We want to, right? We don't tell him your timing's off. I know. Okay, look, I have <laughs> once or twice or more times, right? And I'm sure that you have too, thought your timing is off. Let me drive the car. Let me drive the car. We were supposed to turn there. You know, we don't decide what his plan should be. We just don't, we don't, we don't get to do that. And, and we don't get to, to tell him it's time to perform a miracle. We'd like to, but we don't control Jesus. We don't control his timing. We don't write in his daytime. Um, but we should most certainly ask. And this story tells us right out of the gate that it's okay to ask him for his miracles. And it's okay to ask him and petition him to help us through whatever it is that we need him to help us through. But we don't get to write in his daytime. <coughs> but notice now what Jesus uses. This was the other part of this miracle that I just absolutely loved, right? First of all, he uses whatever's there. Okay? So he doesn't need for us to fancy up our lives or, you know, figure, you know, he will use whatever is present for what he's about to do. So he uses what's there and what's there. Water. Right? Not just water. Ceremonial washing water. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, this water was used to clean people up, right? To make them able to come inside. And we all know what a dust bowl the Holy Land is, right? So this is dirty water. This is not just like, oh, we got some pots of water here. This is filth. Jesus uses dirty water, you guys, in this first miracle, I really think, because Jesus uses dirty people. And Jesus uses dirty circumstances all the time to declare his glory, which is what this miracle did. So we are okay to come to him filthy and just let him work his miracle on us and turn us into what he needs to use. Notice what Mary says to the servants in verse 2-5. She says, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. So Jesus' instructions are fill the jars, draw some out, and take it to the master. Now, remember, this is his first public miracle. So no one knew what was going to happen next, but that they did exactly what he told them to do. So, again, when God tells us what to do, 
when we hear from Jesus what to do, we should do it. Fill the jars and take them out. So they did. They didn't question. They didn't hesitate. They just did it. They heard Mary. They listened to Jesus. And we have to do the same. So all the little details in this are little details. And that's what I love about God's Word, right? God's Word has all these little details. And all these little details are little details of life for us. They're all little detailed lessons and thoughts for us to use in all of our situations in life. The host of the banquet, the head waiter, was amazed at the quality of the wine. He didn't know that there had been a miracle performed, did he? He didn't have a clue that there was a miracle that happened in the basement somewhere or outside somewhere or wherever this happened. All he knew was, wow, we've got good quality wine here, right? And he was grateful for the wine. So the point of that, or at least one point that I gleaned from it, is that, you guys, miracles don't have to be acknowledged by those that benefit from them. I think we oftentimes think they have to be. They don't. They don't have to be acknowledged by people that benefit from them as much as they need to be seen by those and experienced by those who need the faith behind that miracle. So we pray for miracles for our friends. We pray for miracles for our family. We pray for miracles for people we don't know. We, we pray for miracles, right? And sometimes we see those miracles manifest. But we don't need to go running over there and say, that happened because I prayed for that. We don't, we don't need to do that. Maybe that happened so that you can internalize and deepen your faith in the God that just performed that miracle. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Before we completely wrap this up tonight, I do want to go down a couple other points and and, and that is that Jesus' first miracle wasn't the healing of a blind man to restored sight, and it wasn't a lame man that walked again, and it wasn't a dead man that rose again, and it wasn't a, a healing of a leper, and it wasn't, it wasn't any of those, and all those are coming, right? But this miracle, this first miracle, this miracle happened at a family event. And I think that's important because we're family. It happened at a family event. Jesus cares about families. Families of blood origin, families of church groups. This event happened to a family. I think it's important to note that Jesus' first miracle wasn't necessarily Jesus' idea. It was a family member's idea. So miracles can be our idea, right? Now, yes, Jesus knows all things, whatever. Yes, I'm not minimizing that in any way, but we petition for miracles. And especially as family members, we petition on behalf of our family members. I think it's important to note that humanity was transformed into a God-man, right? Humanity was transformed with Jesus arriving as deity here on earth. We see God transforming being a man, right? He transforms water into wine in his first miracle. Transformation began being talked about right here. I'm transforming things. I transformed this deity into a human. I transformed this water into, into wine. And I am fixing to transform all of mankind with salvation. 
and restoration of relationship with God. I think that that transformation is huge in this miracle. I think that the water pots are incredibly significant because he filled the vessels. And you guys, he fills us as vessels. He feel, fills our vessels. <clears throat> and then, he doesn't just fill them, but he fills them with the best wine. Right? These water vessels are not just, they're not just filled up to the brim, but they're filled up to the brim with the best wine possible. And I think that we need to understand that when he fills our vessels, he fills our vessels up to the best is yet to come. And I think we need to recognize that, that when we receive him and he fills us with the Holy Spirit, it's the best we've ever had. And we need to acknowledge that. The best is yet to come. And the best came after the worst. That water was filthy, dirty. And our lives, most of us, a lot of us, were filthy, dirty before that transformative miracle of salvation hit us. And now we are filled up to the top with his best. Amen. Finally, the last piece of this. This was the first of his signs. This was the first of his signs, attesting miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, displaying his deity and his great power openly, and his disciples believed confidently in him as the Messiah. They adhered to, they trusted him, and they relied on him. John uses, all the way through the book of John, referring to Jesus' miracles, John uses the word signs in reference to Jesus' miracles. The word signs means significant action. Miracle means marvel. But sign means significant action. And I think John wanted to emphasize Jesus' actions being significant toward humans, being significant toward the human being experience. And I think that the last half of that sentence explains the why of that. He revealed through these significant actions or these signs, he revealed his glory to us. And although we marvel at that, I don't think John wanted us to see it as magic. I think he wanted us to see Jesus as a Messiah of action, not magic, not marvels. I think he wanted us to see that these significant actions of Jesus's are going to affect us all, individually, collectively, as a whole. His glory is what was revealed. His glory is what should cause us to have great faith. As we look at these miracles, we need to remember that as miracles are about us having faith, not getting what we want. His miracles are about us having faith, not just seeing fantastic things. His miracles are about him showing us what he can do for us and what he will do for us, and what he can do in us, what he does in us in our salvation, and what he does in us and through us because of our salvation. Jesus, 
Jesus' significant actions all started with that transformation moment. That tra transformation moment for us and for him goes on and on and on through all of eternity. And so I pray that as we walk through these miracles in the next few weeks that we can literally see ourselves in each and every one of them and experience Jesus' miracles on that deep, deep level of connection with our Savior. Amen? Amen. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for coming to this earth and revealing your glory to us and showing us that we are family right out of the gate that we're family and that you care about us as family. Not this God in the sky that's so far away, but family. That we are connected to you. That we are blood bought, blood washed children of the Most High King. And that you care about us individually and collectively. And Jesus, I pray that we will regularly petition you for miracles. Because you didn't perform a bunch of them back then and then stop. You perform them every day. These significant actions that happen in our lives. Let us recognize them as the miracles of Christ. I thank you that you came to this earth to transform us all into people that can pray for each other, can recognize miracles in each other's lives, can give you all the praise, honor, and glory for every significant action that you do that we acknowledge as from you for all mankind. And I pray that we will have opportunities to share with people the miracles that you've performed, and the, those people, like the waiter, they don't have to know, but Father, I pray that they will know. Jesus, I pray that they will know, and that they will come to saving faith relationship with you, because they understand the significant actions of you for them. And as we continue to walk down the next four weeks, coming up on Easter Sunday, I pray that, that we will be a church that prays for miracles, sees miracles, and praises miracles along that road. And we will always recognize that you, that you are the reason for all of it. Thank you for leaving your throne on heaven and transforming into a man here on this earth to die for our sins and to raise again, declaring ultimate glory in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat>